And Steve Israel, as we watch so many of the Democratic members, uh, Senator Schumer was in there as well, paying his respects, hugging and kissing her. I'm thinking also that so many of these people that you see, Maxine Waters and others, will no longer be chairs because they're going to be in the minority and they're going to need, as a backbencher, Nancy Pelosi helping guide them. Uh, there's no one better at advising them on how to be in the minority. Well, that is exactly right, Andrea. She she may be a backbencher, but she will be in the front row uh, as she guides this transition. I, I recall in those meetings that I had with her over six years sitting in her office, she always had four criteria for her succession. She was very clear-eyed about this. The first was, who could lead this diverse caucus, keep it united? The second, who has the ability to negotiate uh, not only with uh, Republicans in the House, but with Democrats in the Senate, with a Democratic White House or a Republican White House. Third, who can raise the resources that Democrats need to win the cycle? And fourth, what's in the best interest of the country? Those criteria are clearly being applied to the, the uh, future leadership ranks, and I believe that her voice um, will be clear uh, and, and quite influential. And Andrea, if I may, I just I think we should appreciate this this moment. This is a historic moment that we can't allow to escape. Um, this is the most talented uh, and visionary political figure that we have seen in recent American history. Not just a woman, but a historic, impactful, talented, visionary political leader. Uh, you know, Ashley made the point that her uh, Pelosi's favorite saying was always, no one gives you power, you must take it. Today she does something historic. She returns power to her caucus, believing that the criteria that she has always had uh, are now being fulfilled.